Ismail Meng. Takbir! Masha'Allah. It's good to have you back, Mufti. It's nice to see Always you again, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah to bless them, to bless every one of us, our children, our offspring, to come up to Qiyamah. May Allah bless us, grant us guidance, steadfastness, and keep us on the straight path, and give us all Jannatul Firdaus. Amin, 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 amin. My brothers and sisters, I'm excited to be in Davao. It's not my first time, it's not even my second time. Those of you who know how many times I've been here, you know. Those who don't, find out from those who know. May Allah bless you. May Allah grant you goodness and ease. We are talking about building bridges. Why? Why do we have to build bridges? In order to know the answer of that, we need to know what is meant by building bridges. You know, when you have two islands to get to the other island, you can either go by boat, you can go by speedboat. If it was me, I would go by jet ski, mashallah. Or you can actually build a bridge so that people can go and the two can be connected so that we can benefit one another so that we can enjoy growth when islands are connected there is growth i want to give you an example of the beautiful country of the maldives mashallah the philippines is equally beautiful there are so many islands that the world does not know about how many islands do you have here in the philippines 7,000 islands, subhanallah. If you were to visit one island for every holiday, I think you would die before you got to the end. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us our own islands in Jannatul Firdaus. Amen. So if you look at the Maldives, you land on an island. The airport is just one island. That airport is now being connected to the city across and the city is very very small it's also a small island 45 minutes you can walk around the whole city it's now being connected with a bridge they have built the bridge it's about to be commissioned if i'm not mistaken and you know what that will result in a lot of growth it will facilitate much now remember when we talk of building bridges as human beings it is more about relationships. It is more about understanding one another, respecting one another, helping one another, spending your time on earth in such a meaningful way that you grow in your relationship with Allah to start with. The first bridge that I need to build is my bridge with my maker. There is no way that I have another more important bridge. Remember that. So build your bridge number one with who? With Allah, your maker. How? By worshipping Him alone and by fulfilling the acts of worship for Him alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why does He deserve to be worshipped? He deserves to be worshipped because He made you. He made me. My maker. I will put my head on the ground for my maker. But I will not put my head on the ground for anyone else. Amazing. So you build your relationship with Allah. He's your maker, not only your maker. 
He is not only Al Ilahu, but He is Rabbun at the same time. We say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is indeed due to Allah, who is Rabbul Alameen. Rabb does not translate as Lord, but we use the word Lord because it's possibly a word that explains a small aspect of Rabb better than other words. But in the Arabic language, Rabb is the one who nourishes, cherishes, provides, protects, cures, etc. The one who is in absolute control of every aspect of existence. Remember that. The one who is in absolute control of every aspect of existence is known as Rabbun. So when we say Rabbul Alameen, we are saying the one who is in total control. Not only did he make, but he nurtures, he takes care of absolutely every aspect of existence right up to the end. He is known as Rabbun. What do I do? I praise him. I build my bridge with him. I make sure that I have connected myself to him because he who made me is exactly he whom I am going to return to. When you die, where are you going? So some people say, I'm going to this person, I'm going to that thing, I'm going to this, etc. The correct answer is when you die, you are going back to the one who made you. No doubt with that answer. There is nobody who can argue with that. Muslim, non-Muslim, no matter who. Where you are going is where you came from. Subhanallah. You are going back to he who made you in the first place. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surat Yasin. When the people started questioning resurrection and they, they asked a question, Who is going to give life back to these bones after they have been totally scattered and totally eroded and totally disintegrated into the soil once again? So Allah says, well, the one who gave it life in the first place will give it life again. If Allah gave you life from nothing, surely it's easier for him to give you life from remains. Amazing, amazing. If Allah could create you from nothing, do you really think he cannot create you from something, from the remains of you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So that is the reason why I owe him a connection, communication, because I am at his mercy. He is the one I'm going to return to. There's no way I will survive or there is no way I will succeed if I don't have a relationship with he whom I'm going to return to. My eternal life after death is in his hands. This life is only 60 to 70 years on average. No more than that. A few might go slightly beyond and a lot will be passing away earlier, but the average 60 to 70, without a doubt. But how long have the people died for? Those who died 500 years ago are already dead for 500 years. They were only alive for 60, 70 years. It goes to show you that people will be dead longer than they were alive. This life is very short. You think about it carefully. You will be dead longer than you were ever on earth. It goes to show you this is a temporary life. It's a test. Keep on facing the test by building a connection between you and he who made you in the first place. That's why as Muslims, we have the strongest link with our maker because we don't tolerate within us association or partnership with our maker because that would chop the relationship. You know what Allah says? Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi meaning Allah is telling you through Muhammad sallallahu words. Muhammad sallallahu is telling you what Allah is saying, but it's not Quran. I explained this yesterday in Manila that Hadith Qudsi you cannot read in Salah because it's not Quran, but it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah says, "Ana aghna shurakai ani shirki man amila amalan ashraka fihi maia ghairi taraktuhu wa shirka." I am the most independent of the partners. I am the most independent of the partners. If someone has done a deed in which they have involved another person or something else as a partner with me, I'd rather leave the whole deal and give it to the partner. Do you know what this means? If amongst you 
there is a multi millionaire and i'm sure they are may allah bless you with more i mean even if you're not a multi millionaire may allah make you a millionaire i mean mashallah that i mean was a little bit louder than the previous one because money we understand very easy may allah make you a millionaire i mean wow may allah bless us may allah make us millionaires in character in conduct and even in connection with him so if there is a millionaire and that millionaire is actually now doing a deal if someone does a five dollar deal with another person and they say to the millionaire you are a 50 percent partner in here the millionaire will say keep the whole deal i don't need it you see i don't need it why are you insulting me by putting a five dollar deal here and telling me 50 percent is yours you can have all of it so allah is even more independent than that if you want to do a five dollar deal and say to allah you know what i'm worshiping you but i also have to worship this other sheikh and this other grave and this other stone and this other stick allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says give it to them i don't need it don't insult me that's the true meaning of ana aghna shuraka yani shirk that's the true meaning of it. To so say, I'm independent. They need it. If you think they need it, give it to them. Why are you insulting me? So this is why we say as Muslims, we don't do this. We worship Allah alone because we are building a bridge with our maker so that we are going to cross the most important bridge in our existence will be the bridge that goes over the fire of Jahannam, the bridge that goes over the fire of hell, hellfire. It is known as As-Sirat. Allah speaks about this bridge and he says every one of you is going to cross over this bridge it is definitely something that Allah has already written it's going to be done and the hadith the Prophet وسلم, says that bridge is as thin as a hair those who were who were good and they built the correct bridges on earth with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to start with, they will be able to cross the bridge in a flash of lightning. Those who were sinful, they will cross it slower and slower and slower and some will struggle and some will fall over into hellfire. Imagine you are doing tight roping. You know what's a tight roping? When you are walking, subhanallah, on a rope that happens to be between maybe two high places and you're balancing. Some people are experts. They can run. Some people, subhanallah, they walk. Some people, they take their time, but they get to the other side. Those are all winners. You and I, what would we do? I think I would look at it and say, uh -uh, not my job, not me. You guys carry on. That is the dunya. It's normal for us to be frightened if we don't know how to do something. But you know what? When it comes to the akhirah, everyone has to cross. And you know what's at the bottom? No trampoline, no hellfire. May Allah help us to cross. Seek the forgiveness of Allah and your bridges shall be built. Seek the forgiveness of Allah, your bridges shall be built. Nothing can destroy your bridge. Even if the bridge was damaged because of your distance from Allah, repair it today. Repair it today by seeking the forgiveness of Allah, worshipping Allah alone, trying your best. Keep on trying. Allah loves those who try. That's point number one. I spoke about building bridges with Allah and why we build the bridge with Allah. We build it because we're going to go back to him. He is in absolute control of everything. I want to go to Jannah. I'm going to be in Jannah forever and ever. So how can I spend these 60, 70 years away from Allah when I'm expecting goodness from Allah? If someone wants goodness from you, they need to develop a small relationship with you. They need to understand you. You need to understand them. Once in a while, you will have to forgive each other. I'm going to come to that inshallah when I speak about building bridges of a different sort. But... With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a one-way forgiveness because Allah is perfect. You seek Allah's forgiveness. But don't let shaitan damage the bridge by making you lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Because shaitan is one who blows up the bridge with his own little dynamite.
You know what he does? He comes there and he plays with your mind and your heart and he makes you think that your sin will not be forgiven by Allah. So you become depressed because you begin to think that your bridge is irreparable. But Allah says, no, Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna allaha yaghfiru al-dhunuba jami'a innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-raheem O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, let them know Allah will forgive all your sins no matter what you've done. That bridge will be repaired. It will be repaired. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Do you know what He says? وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِن قَبْلِ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنصَرُونَ Turn to Allah quickly, quickly, before the punishment suddenly overtakes you. And then who's going to help you? Nobody. Subhanallah. So be careful, my brothers and sisters. You and I are human beings. We commit sin. We do wrong. It's human nature. You know what is the bonus for a believer? When you and I commit sin, we are never committing sin out of defiance of Allah. But we are committing sin out of the weakness of humankind. Any one of us. If you've committed a sin, have you committed a sin because you want to defy Allah? And you want to tell him, Oh Allah, you made alcohol haram. I'm going to show you that I'm going to drink it. What are you going to do? Does anyone do that? A believer doesn't do that. Never. We are not committing sin to defy Allah. I've never committed a sin to challenge Allah. No. We are committing sin as believers because... We are human beings. Our human nature has made us weak. We know it's wrong and we've done it and we expect the forgiveness of Allah. That's what makes you a believer. But if you defy Allah, you're not a believer because then you're challenging Allah. So have hope you have not challenged Allah. No matter what you did, you didn't challenge Allah. Major sin, minor sin. You did not challenge Allah. Allah will forgive you. Don't lose hope. The minute you lose hope and you start to think my sin is too big, your bridge is gone. It's gone for, for a long, long time. You become depressed. You become sad. You suffer OCD and so many other sicknesses because for you, everything has become doom and gloom. Allah is more merciful than anything. Someone came to me and told me, I take two hours to make wudu. I said, you know what? Put a clock. After three minutes, you stop what you're doing. Try your best. No, but I can't. Two hours for wudu. Allah is more merciful than that time. Allah knows that you're not well. Allah knows. Shaitan is playing with you to make you doubt. Is this clean? Is this not clean? Allah will forgive you. He knows. You cannot have everything. If I'm standing here right now, if I put my hand here, Shaitan can come and play with a weak mind and make you think whose hand was there before, where were they touching, what was there, what type of bacteria is here. You will need an electronic gadget with you all the time to check and test and you won't be able to walk on earth. Don't worry, Allah knows. He will forgive you completely only when you see something loud and clear in front of you as najasa, as impurity. You know that this is clear impurity. But stop Stop having these doubts because why I'm talking about it. People destroy their relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they start doubting the mercy of Allah. Allah's mercy is greater than your salah. Allah's mercy is greater than your zakah. Allah's mercy is greater than your wudu. Allah's mercy is greater than so many things. When a person cannot make wudu with water because of the unavailability of water or because of them not being well, they are allowed to Replace it with something that is not wudu, it's tayammum. That proves that Allah does not need your wudu. Do you understand the point? It proves Allah doesn't need it. But Allah tells you what to do for your own need, not for His. So Allah says, look, you make the wudu. If you really cannot because of X, Y, Z, then you can do the tayammum. The same applies to salah. I'm standing and reading the hadith says, Salli qa'iman fa illam tastati' fa qa'idan fa illam tastati' fa ala jamb. Read standing. If you cannot, read sitting at least. If you cannot read sitting, then read on your side. Wow. Look at Allah building bridges with us. Understanding us. Giving us what is easy for us. Facilitating for us. Where are our bridges with Allah? 
Where are our bridges with Allah? My brothers, my sisters have hope in the mercy of Allah. Rahmanun, Rahimun, Raufun, Wadudun, Ghaffarun. Subhanallah. Those are the names of Allah. Most merciful, most beneficent, most forgiving. The, the irresistible, the everlasting. That is Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves you just like He loves me and He loves everyone else. But we need to turn to Him to get that love, to feel it, to sense it, and understand His mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. The next bridge we need to build is the huge bridge. It is a bridge with the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People don't talk about it sometimes. They don't believe that it's a bridge to be built. It is a huge bridge to be built. Do you know what? There is a hadith the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, my ummah will be recognized by me on the day of judgment by the shining of the places that they used to wash throughout the day for wudu. Subhanallah. It's called atharul wudu. You make wudu, you wash yourself so many times a day, you clean yourself so many times a day to pray. You have a special shining on your face, even if your complexion is dark. Many of us, when the complexion is light, we say, oh, very pretty, very good looking, etc. But you are actually a person who recognizes beauty when you can see it in the darkest of the dark of the people. And you say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Noor is not complexion. Noor is a light that is within, beyond complexion. Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu an was one of the darkest of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi returned from Mi'raj, he says, Oh Bilal, I heard your footsteps in Jannah. I heard your footsteps in Jannah. If it was you and I, we would look at the man, astaghfirullah, I hope we wouldn't actually. And we would think this dark guy over here is already going to Jannah. Astaghfirullah. We have become racist. We have become tribalist. We have drawn, we have broken barriers. Let's start to build the bridges. Let's understand that race is a test from Allah. Lita'arafu. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna Allah says, O oh people, we have created you from one mother and father. We have created you from a single male and female. You are one family. I always knew I was related to you guys in Davao. Yeah, mashallah. Why? We are connected. How are we connected? So many ways. And if you don't know those ways, one that you do is through Adam alayhi salam and Hawa. We are part of one family, subhanallah. Some of us are related more. Some of us, at least we go back there. In fact, we go back to the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, Noah, all of us. Every one of us, we've passed through Nuh. He was one of our forefathers, yours and mine. But what does Allah say? Allah says, we created you different tribes and people in order that you recognize one another so that you can know not in order to destroy your bridge not in order to say we are better wallahi there is a disease with nearly every tribe in the whole world what is the disease i want you to be honest speak to your heart i'm going to say something very very serious i want you to think in your heart Every tribe, think about which tribe you are from, right? Every tribe believes that they are better than the other. Am I right? That is a sign of shaitan's trap. He is putting a dynamite on your bridge to destroy it. That exactly is the racism, the tribalism that we are talking about. Everyone thinks I am better. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, Iblis's crime was exactly that. Ana minhu. He said, I am better than you. That's why Allah said, you are cursed. You are not better. You are cursed. So if you want to be cursed, you got to think those people are not good. I have heard it from a lot of people. 
and you need to work on yourself. They think they are better. Not just in this country, everywhere in the whole world. Sometimes even nationality. They think, oh, be careful of those people. They are this. They... Every tribe has good and they have bad. Every nationality has good and they have bad. It's not unique to you and I. They say, watch out, these people are crooks. Crooks? What crooks? Before I went to Nigeria, they told me, be careful. When you go to Nigeria, they will pinch your shadow. They will steal your shadow. Wallahi, when I went to Nigeria, the people I interacted with were some of the best people I've met in my life. Wallahi. Subhanallah. I've seen communities just like here in Davao, Cotabato, Zamboanga, wherever else we go, we see beautiful people, lovely human beings. May Allah bless you and bless all of us. Would you like someone to think you are bad? Well, then don't think that others are bad. You want someone to think they are better than you? No. So stop thinking you are better than them. Anasu sawasiya ka asnanil mish. People are equal like the teeth of a comb. Like the teeth of a comb. How many of you have a comb with one tooth sticking out? <laughs> That's not a comb. So this is why we say, be careful, my brothers, my sisters. I mentioned a true fact that every tribe, we are trained since we were children. You are better than those guys. We are trained since we were children. You need to break that. لِتَعَارَفُوا Allah created you differently to recognize one another, to test you. That's why, wallahi, wallahi. Sometimes I've traveled to the poorest of places and areas in the world. And I've seen people who have made me cry because of their dedication with Allah and His Rasul. Wallahi, in Nigeria, I saw a clip in one of the most remote parts of Nigeria where they don't even have books, they don't even have classrooms. They were sitting outside, not even under a tree, and they were learning not the Quran. They had all memorized the Quran, but the kids were learning a Shatibiya, which we don't even know. Wallahi, and we are thinking we are better than them. They will be in the first saf in Jannatul Firdaus. Possible, it's possible. Why? They made an effort. They worked hard. How hard have you worked to build your bridge with Allah and His Rasul? They spent their entire lives building that bridge. And with us, we didn't even know we had to build the bridge. How do you build it? Clean your heart. Clean your heart. Who are you? I'm just a human being like you. Why am I standing here? Because I care for you, you care for me, mashallah. My brothers and sisters, we all have that internal pride. Let that pride not become arrogance. Let it just be a happiness. When I say I am proud to be a Muslim, I mean I'm happy to be a Muslim. I don't mean I'm arrogant to be a Muslim. I'm happy to be a Muslim. I'm a proud Muslim, which means I don't need to hide my identity. But guess what? I have to love you like I love myself because that is the biggest bridge I need to build. None of you are true believers until you love for the other, another, what you love for yourself. Subhanallah. So like I said, Allah has tested us. We need to build a relationship. Muhammad sallallahu among his companions, they were not just Arabs. Allah chose for there to be the white and the black and those in between. Everyone was in his companionship. Suhaib ibn Sinan al-Rumi was a Caucasian. Salman al-Farisi was a Persian. Even though they may have been one or two, why did Allah choose them to be there? To show you that no matter what color, no matter where you're from, wallahi, you have equal access to Allah. Who is the winner from amongst us? Who's the best from amongst us? Who's the best? Allah says it in the same verse. Inna akramakum the best from amongst you in the eyes of Allah, the most honorable in the eyes of Allah is he who has developed the consciousness of Allah known as taqwa. You have a solid relation with Allah, you are the best. Even if nobody knew you on earth, Allah knows you. How many of us are famous in this world, but in the skies, they don't know us. 
And how many people, no one knows them on earth, but they are so famous in the heavens because every day the angels are taking their deeds up. And there are so many deeds from this person, but no one knows them. Which one would you like to be? A person who the whole world knows what food you ate, what handbag you have, what perfume you used, how many times you went to the toilet. Astaghfirullah. People are putting that on Instagram. Astaghfirullah. What do you want to put? The whole world knows all your detail, but the angels don't know you because you didn't even read Salah once. May Allah help us to build this bridge. Very important. My brothers and sisters, don't give up the deen. Don't give up Islam just because of materialism. No. Build your relation with Allah. Allah shows us that if you want contentment and happiness, it's not going to come with money. Money has never ever brought someone contentment. It only brought them temporary pleasure. Remember this. Money only brings you temporary comfort. That's it. Temporary comfort. But if it comes hand in hand with Allah's relationship, your relationship with Allah, it lasts long. It will be everlasting. Allah will bless you. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Oh Allah, oh our Rabb, grant us goodness in this world and in the next and save us from the torment of hellfire, the punishment. So it's very important for us to know the best from amongst us is the one whose bridge with Allah and his Rasul is the strongest, strongest, most powerful. MashaAllah. You have a skyway in Manila. You have a highway in other countries. You have motorways in other countries. What happens? They try not to have a traffic light. They try to avoid the traffic, etc., etc. You pay a little bit in some countries, a little toll gate fee. And you are so happy to use a sweet way. That's a bridge, mashallah. What did that bridge do for you? It was very difficult to make, but when they made it and it was ready, it facilitated transport. It made you go from A to B. Our bridges primarily need to make us go from this dunya straight into Jannah, not into Jahannam. That's your bridge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and power. As for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we respect him, we revere him, we do not render an act of worship to him, but rather we render our acts of worship to Allah. لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى ابن مريم ولكن قولوا عبد الله ورسوله. In his on his deathbed, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sat up and he says, "Behold, don't." Go beyond the limits with me and begin to worship me the way the Christians started doing with Jesus. May peace be upon him. You should always say servant of Allah and his messenger. He says, don't worship me. Worship he who made you. I am just a messenger from him. I've given you the message. What was the message? That message brings us to the third bridge. What is the third bridge? Your character, your conduct. Your akhlaq, your treatment of others. The Prophet Muhammad was a shining example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Whoever is hoping to get to the hereafter, the last day, whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah and whoever remembers Allah often, for them there is a beautiful example in the life and the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow. So follow him. In what? In everything. As best as you can. Keep trying. How did he speak? How much love did he promote? Subhanallah. When you become closer to Allah, your heart is softened. We always say that. But if you think you are pious and your heart is becoming hard and harsh, that is not a sign of piety. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ it is because of the mercy of Allah that you are soft and lenient towards those around you. 
It shows you that it's a sign of the mercy of Allah when you are soft and lenient. Yesterday, I received a message from someone, someone in a group. And it said there, there is a certain scholar who said something that was wrong. So he'd rather be dead than alive. Immediately, I replied to say, how can you wish death upon someone whom you have just disagreed with? Are you not Muslim enough to be able to care for that person such that you reach out to them in the most beautiful, positive, lovely, loving, caring way so that they can see their mistake? Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayru laka min humrin na'am. Wallahi, if Allah was to use you to guide a single person, it is better for you than the red camel. The red camel meaning the most expensive of the conveyance of the time. So I don't need to start beating up someone because I disagree with them. I need to engage them. I need to convey to them. I need to speak to them. At the end of the day, Allah has kept a day of reckoning to reckon. Who was right? Who was wrong? Who did this? Who did that? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah bless us. That's why the hearts are only known by Allah. Among the Muslims, we break barriers. How? We say, this one is like this, that one is like that, this one is from here, this one's heart is dirty, that one is unclean, this one reads salah this way, I don't want, this one does that. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, keep promoting goodness from Allah and His Rasul as per the methods taught to us by the first generations. And you know what? You will receive lots of goodness. If they are guided, Alhamdulillah. If they are not guided, still, it's in the hands of Allah. I did my duty. Ma alayna illa al Our duty is to convey the message. What type of a message? Message of goodness. That verse I read earlier, the Prophet ﷺ was told, if you were harsh and hard-hearted, the people would have dispersed. Nobody wants to be corrected in a harsh way. Imagine you do something wrong and someone starts swearing you and shouting you and beating you. What will you do? You go away. Subhanallah. If they swore you, you won't come here. You don't want to listen to them. Why are we seated here today in our thousands? Why? The reason is we want to hear a message that will motivate us to become better people, better Muslims, closer to Allah. That's it. Nothing else. I asked you another question. If you know any of the speakers who are here, any of them, including myself, if you know any one of us, ask yourself, how and why do you know us? You know how blessed we are? The only reason is because qala Allahu wa qala Rasulu. Nothing else, nothing else. You only know me or us, and I only know you because of Allah and His Rasul. I didn't do a business deal with you. I didn't come to marry, etc. I didn't come for this or for that. We know each other because we have been helping each other get close to Allah alone. I never told you, get close to me. Never. Not once. I don't even like it. A few days ago, someone told me, Sheikh, we don't know you well enough. We want you to communicate with another Sheikh of ours in another country of the world to convince him what type of a person you are and what you believe in. I told him I'm not interested. I'm a Muslim. If I've said something wrong, you let me know. If I've not said something wrong, then subhanallah, you find your way. Why should I pledge allegiance to someone I don't even know who he is? We've become worse than the Christians and the Jews. We want people to go to another human in order for that human to decide what's in our heart. That's not possible. I'm not going to drop myself to that level. My allegiance lies with Allah. You want to take what we are saying? Only take it because it is qala Allahu wa qala Rasul. If I've made a mistake, please correct me because my bridge with Allah is only going to be strengthened when I am corrected where I'm going wrong on that particular connection. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the reason of my relationship with you when I see you going towards the fire and I cannot tell you, my sister, you know what, just be a bit careful. This is not a good idea. It's going to land you in some trouble. Subhanallah. 
If you are reading Salah and from the corner of your eye, you see a blind man in danger, it is your duty to abandon the Salah and go and save him. Did you know that? It's your duty to abandon your Salah and go and save him. Why? Because you are supposed to care for people. He would have dropped maximum, he would have got hurt, maybe he would have died. It's not a matter of Jannah and Jahannam for him. Because that was his life already. So if that is the case with a physical human being, what about spiritually? How can I tell someone, you know what, I, I can see what's in your heart. You're not a good Muslim. You're a hypocrite. You are just pretending to be who you are not. Who are you to decide that? That's for Allah alone. Some of the scholars will tell you that it is shirk to do that. How can I believe you know the heart? It is Allah alone who knows what's in the heart. So that's why Allah has kept the day of judgment. So my brothers and sisters, stop thinking bad of one another. Think good things, subhanallah. Think good things. When someone does something, you don't say, you know, he hates me or she hates me. That's why she's doing that. Maybe it's their nature. Maybe they've made a mistake. Maybe they need some help. Yes, sometimes they are bad people. So the hadith says, لا يلدغ المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين A true believer will never be bitten from the same hole twice. Never. That's the beautiful teaching of Muhammad So if I follow the sunnah, I will definitely develop contentment. When I respect people, I have built bridges that are amazing. They will help carry me through the dunya. My bridge with Allah and His Rasul will help carry me into the hereafter. But if I follow the sunnah correctly and develop respect for the rest of the creatures of Allah, it will help me in my life. It will help me in my life. Respect those whom you disagree with. We are living in non-Muslim countries. We are living in minorities. We are living in countries that don't adopt Islam as a religion of the state, etc., etc. In most cases. And you know what? We have people who follow other faiths. You have to respect them. Even if you disagree. We disagree, but we respect you. You have the rights that we have. Alhamdulillah. I was in one western country speaking to a little group of people and they were saying, you know, the non-Muslims are doing this and that, they should be stopped, etc. I said, brother, the same laws that allow you to practice your Islam in this country are the very laws that have allowed them to do what they are doing. So start thinking, smell the coffee, come on, use your brain. You're not living in a place where you have implemented the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. They say, some people actually say, no, you must fight them. Well, if you were taught to fight them and they were taught to fight you and the others were taught to fight both of you and a fourth party was taught to fight all three of you, in that case, we would be fighting and killing from birth to death. So wake up, live your life. Your life is only 50, 60, 70 years, not more. Do you want to live your entire life fighting with hatred and this? You need to know where you are. You need to know who you are. You need to know Islam. You need to learn about the deen. You need to practice it as best as you can. But you're living in a society where you will have to respect those who have chosen something else. I disagree with you, but I respect you. That's how you build a bridge. How many of us have neighbors who are non-Muslim? Please put up your hands. Okay, put your hands down. From amongst you, how many of your neighbors are good people? Put up your hand. You see, the majority. Thank you. That's the point I'm raising. I can put up my hand to say I have met non-Muslims who are better in character and conduct than the Muslims. I can say yes, I have met them. Wallahi. So what are you taught? I have met people who are not Muslim, who are superb human beings. They practice Islam but are not Muslim. And I know people who are Muslim who don't practice Islam. Allahu Akbar. Look, take a look at where we are failing. What bridges have you built? For them, the only thing that's needed is Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. It might come, inshallah. You try and work towards it. But for us, we need more than that because we have said the shahada, but we are far away from the teachings of Islam. We rob people, we cheat, we deceive, we backbite, we engage in jealousy, hatred, malice. We, we do not want to see people succeed. We become such that we, do, we lose sleep over the fact that someone is doing better than us. And we are Muslim. Those are our characters. We have pride, we have arrogance. We think we are big. 
We think, oh, mashallah, Allah has favored me. I read salah. I am a saint of Allah. The other man didn't even read salah. He's a kafir, fasik, fajir, jahannam. It's, where did you get all of that from? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. One day a young brother came to me and told me, you know, Shaykh, I'm very sad. There's this group of people came to me and said, you're going to Jahannam. I said, brother, don't be sad. Don't be sad. It's only those who are in Jahannam who know who else is going to be there. So may Allah forgive us. Yeah, the hadith says clearly, when you call someone a kafir, subhanallah, you go back with that title. You go back with the title when you're wrong. That's why this business of calling people kafir and fasik and fajir and all of that, we need to stop it because that is blowing up our bridges. You need to make it clear, this deed is not the deed of iman, it is the deed of kufr. But you cannot rule on a person. You cannot rule on a person. You don't know. How can you say something? So this is why as Muslims, what are we taught? We are taught that if you associate partners with Allah, it is shirk. Did you hear that? It is shirk. But I didn't say you're a mushrik. You see the difference? I'm only teaching. I'm only giving. If you say someone who doesn't read salah, they need to know that not reading salah is kufr. It's disbelief. But I can't say you're a kafir. Who am I? <laughs> Allah will judge that. So remember the difference between the two. There are deeds that are kufr, we need to know them and stay away from them. There are deeds that are shirk, we need to know them, we need to stay away from them. But I cannot go around saying, Mushrik, Kafir, Fasik, Fajir, Muslim. Who are you? Allah says, Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment. What is judgment? The day of judging. Why are you judging from now? From now, every day we judge. And then when we get to Qiyamah, say, Oh Allah, don't worry about judging, I did it for you. Yay! Astaghfirullah, you look like a mental case, mad person. May Allah forgive us. You don't do that. But we have another problem. I need to be fair, we need to be balanced. Some people, when we are guiding them, and teaching them, and advising them, they just say, don't judge me. And they walk away. Have you heard that? Have you heard that? We are not judging you, my brother. Don't confuse advice with judgment. I'm only guiding you. I'm telling you there's a snake around the corner. Don't judge me. Go get bitten. It's okay. Subhanallah. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. So let's not be from among those who just uses the statement, don't judge me. You know, some people, they give up the deen. They, they change the deen. They give it up. Whether it is the salah, some just reduced it to say, no, you can only read three salah, it's okay. The other two, we are moderate Muslims, it's okay. Two discount is still, you know, 33 out of five is still more than 50%. It's okay, fine. The others, they, okay, one is to be weak. When you, when you are not wearing your hijab because you are weak, it's one thing. But when you are promoting the removal of the hijab and saying that, you know what? We are just moderate Muslims. My brothers and sisters, we are all moderate. Islam is moderate. But moderation does not mean giving up your deen in order to fit in somewhere. No, you don't make that mistake. Don't use the term moderate, moderate, moderate in order to start drinking. I'm a moderate Muslim. We just drink, but we don't drink more than two pints a day. Come on. Two pints? <laughs> what moderation is that? So to do haram and use the excuse of moderation is destruction of the bridge. That's what it is. Don't use the term moderation in order to do haram. You have people who say, no, I'm okay. I'm a moderate Muslim. I only show up to my knees, not more than that. <laughs> Subhanallah, moderate. Soon they'll show the cleavage and say, no, I'm not showing my breasts, only the little cleavage here. It's okay. I'm a moderate Muslim. Wallahi, it's happening. Wallahi, qasaman, it's happening. We need to talk about it. What I've said is light. It goes deeper. I don't want out of respect of myself and yourselves. We don't need to talk about that. But you know, people are doing dirty things. And when you tell them something, they say, You're, we are moderate. Khalas, forget about this guy. What are you talking about? It's a new religion, man. Totally different. Zakah. They say, no, two and a half percent. Now, now this, I haven't heard it, but I'm saying it's going to come there. Two and a half percent, too much. We are moderate Muslim. Just give one percent. It's okay. 
Moderate? You're changing the deen and you're saying I'm moderate Muslim? Islam is moderate. Whatever Allah tells you is already moderate. MashaAllah. Allah blessed us. Look, today we have the Me Too campaign. Do you know what it's all about? Women who are complaining about being sexually exploited and abused. By all means, we, we stand for the rights of those who are abused. Indeed. But you know what Islam tells us? From the beginning, just separate yourselves. Keep yourselves this way, that. So that you avoid it. But they used to say, no. You don't have to. You can dress how you want, do what you want, interact how you want, do everything, etc., etc., etc. Okay, fine, fair enough. That's the rule that you've adopted. But now, the, the difficulties that are sometimes faced as a result of unlimited interaction, here they are. Here they are. Islam says you will interact with the opposite sex. You have to interact with the opposite sex. There is no way you are not going to interact with the opposite sex because you have a mother, you have sisters, etc., etc. In the case of the females, you have brothers, etc. You have mahram and non-mahram. During your life, you will have to interact with the opposite sex. You have to. Islam didn't prohibit it. But Islam has only given you guidelines. How will you do it? One word, utmost respect. That's the word. Utmost respect. I interact with you, respect. You interact with me, respect. I must honor you because I'm building the bridge. I will never abuse that. May Allah protect us all. So this is why we say, when Allah comes with rules, when Muhammad sallallahu has explained to us those rules, why are they there? They are there in order for us to lead a life of happiness, contentment, purity, goodness. When you control yourself from just letting loose, you become content. You become content. I controlled myself. May Allah help us. And that's your life's challenge. My life's challenge. My whole life is a battle to control myself, my nafs. I need to control it. A day will come when Allah will release it in Jannah. In Jannah, whatever the soul wishes for, it will have. And whatever the eyes find sweet, tasty, they will have. Wow, subhanallah. Nowadays, you walk into, mashallah, confectionery shop. You look at all these desserts. What happens? More and more people only look and they swallow and they feel full. Why? Because they're worried about their weight. They're worried about so many other things. They're worried about the cost. They're worried about how unhealthy it might be, the sugar, whatever else it might be. So they can just look and say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And then you walk away. SubhanAllah. Control. When I was young, we used to eat. I used to eat anything and everything. Now I'm old. You offer me food, I'll tell you. Thank you. Zakallah khair. Why? We limit the amount, we limit the quality, we limit the time. All this control is for what? This control is so that you can lead a healthier life. Allah tells you when you control your entire life, you will lead a healthier hereafter. Subhanallah. You see things, they don't belong to you. You say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, carry on. Allah will give you more. Allah says, but when you get to Jannah, you can see anything. When you see it there, you want it, it's yours. Allahu Akbar. I can't wait for that day. May Allah grant us Jannah. Imagine, you see something, you want it, it's yours. You want that? Yours. That? Yours. There? Yours. MashaAllah. Subhanallah. Rabbil Arsh. MashaAllah. So to, to get there, you need to cross the bridge. Remember, my brothers and sisters, we spoke about building the relationship with Allah. That bridge. We spoke about the bridge with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu with Muhammad sallallahu himself. Remember, just to send blessings and salutations upon him is so great that Allah will bless you tenfold minimum. Man salla alayya wahidatan sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever sends blessings and salutations upon me, Allah will bless them tenfold in return. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. 
Beautiful words. Allah will bless you 10 times more. You want Allah to bless you? Easy. Send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See how your bridges are built. Bridges are built with bricks, with concrete, with steel, and so on. Well, every drop of concrete and every little piece of steel requires an effort. It requires a big effort. Your salah, get up in the morning for the sake of Allah. What are you doing? Solidifying your bridge. Then we spoke about building bridges with one another, with your family members, with your neighbors, with the Muslims, with the non-Muslims. We respect each other. We may disagree. We will discuss matters of religion. No problem. Just like you have the right to, to say that I believe that this is how it should be. They have the right to let you know as well. They will tell you, well, we, I think otherwise. Allah will be the judge. You don't need to harm someone, attack them and kill them and hit them just because of what they have believed. No. Subhanallah. If that was the case, and if that was the teaching of Islam, none of us here would be seated today. Our grandfathers would have been killed a long time ago by others who were there. But evidence that Islam is a beautiful religion, we have what is known in this country as Balik Islam. People who have reverted to Islam. Can I tell you what is your test regarding those who have reverted to Islam? If in your heart you embrace them completely as equals, you help them, you reach out to them, you treat them as equals, you have succeeded. The minute you think you are better than them, you have actually failed. Because in reality, they are better than you. They are better than you. So, shaitan, like I said, he's the biggest enemy. He keeps destroying our bridges. What does he do? He makes us believe we are better. When you have a person who enters the fold of Islam, they say their shahada. Do you know what we offer them as Muslims? It is embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Someone from amongst us, they utter the shahada. What do we do? As soon as they are finished, we say takbir, right? Takbir. Subhanallah. That is not even a sunnah, but we say it anyway. Allahu Akbar. Allah, everyone is angry, is happy, right? And you know what? It stops there. That's it. What did you offer them? I offered them a nice takbir when they did it. Hip hip hooray. Hip hip hooray. That's what we did. That's all we did. And after that, we went away. Khalas. <laughs> it's a reality. But when they needed to get married, we said, no, Balik Islam. Ah, ah. Impossible. No, no, no. We are better. Iblis. Iblis. Khalas. Ana khayrum minho. A'udhu billah. Think of it. You are being an agent of Iblis directly. Same words. What did he say? Ana khayrum minhu. What are you saying? Ana khayrum minhu. Same words. You think you're not going to be cursed by Allah. You will suffer the consequences of those words. Be careful. Be careful. I'm the only guy who can tell you this because I'm flying out anyway. So don't worry. <laughs> It's okay. I, we have to be honest. It's a reality. I'm only fulfilling my duty. It's a serious statement. Serious. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum. I love to say this. They were all Balik Islam. All of them. Allahu Akbar. All of them. Abu Bakr. Who was he? He was a revert to Islam. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. Who was he? He was an enemy of Islam, but he entered Islam. When he entered Islam, what happened? He became known as one of the best of those to walk on earth. But if he was with us, we would have said, Balik Islam, a'a, billahi min ash rajim Correct your heart. Build the bridge. Change yourself. Speak to the old and the young. Nothing wrong. When they want to marry, marry. Marriage is connected to your deen and akhlaq. It's not connected to anything else. You have good character. You have a good sense of deen. Alhamdulillah, you are worth it. You are worthwhile. The minute your deen and your akhlaq is not in order, that's it. What's my relationship? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So I touched on this because it's important for us to Afford our brothers and sisters who've reverted to the deen some opportunities to help them, to teach them, to reach out to them. I know of one 
auntie, a lady, she actually reaches out to all the reverts and teaches them Quran on her own for free in the language they speak as well as in Arabic and Salah and the rules. And every evening she sits for a while with these people and she teaches them voluntary. That's building bridges. Not just with people, with Allah, with Rasul. Because you know when you teach someone good, when they follow that good, Allah will reward you as well. Very intelligent. So let's remove the dirt from our hearts. Don't be jealous. Don't make people's lives difficult. Make life easy. Allah will make your life easy. The hadith says, whoever creates ease for someone in this world, Allah will create ease for them in the world and in the hereafter. Hadith. So you live with people, whether it's your spouse, your in-laws, your family members, uncles, aunts, neighbors, friends, etc., etc. Make life easy for people. You know, when you reach out to non-Muslims, they begin to see the beauty of Islam. Because across the globe, they are all told Islam is a barbaric, dirty, filthy faith. That's what they are told. But when they interact with you, that's the day they will know. Do you know what? That's wrong, man. These guys are... Very, very good people. They're really good. They reach out to us. They are honest. Many of us are not honest in business. In my country, a lot of people say, Muslim, I don't want to do business. I'd rather do with the non-Muslims. If I do with the Muslims, they're going to cheat me. But if I do with the non-Muslim, they won't cheat. That might be the case even here. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it can be. I heard someone laughing. It probably is true. Yeah. I heard more people laughing. It's probably more true. Now I heard even more people laughing. I better close my speech. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I've spoken for exactly the hour. I pray that Allah bless you all. It was an honor to come to Davao. I want to thank Farida Tunisa Foundation as well as the others. All of you who have attended for making this possible. For the contributions you have actually put forth in order to make such a beautiful event possible. The only dua I make for you, may Allah grant you Jannah. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. تكبير. And that's it. Mary requests everyone to please sit down. May magahabul gusto na selfie. Finish na. Sorry. Inshallah. Our beloved Sheikh. Breaks of being an MC. Parang yung attention nila ka ano? Yeah. Okay na ako pa din ako mowe. Finish na eh. Okay, meron po tayong nawalang uh, May nawawala akong ano, alahas. Please claim it here. Okay. May relohong nawawala. Ay, natagpuan. Nandito ho. Lost and found. Sige, ano siguro muna, no? Para hindi masyadong magulo yung exit sa labas. Ano muna tayo? Let's take ano, ahandahan lang. Okay, last part of our program, may we request... Everybody to please have your attention to our screen. The, there will be last video to be played by the Mensahe TV. We hope next year, and dito yung mga sponsors natin, please, inshallah, sana... Masakit masabihan Maglinis ka muna Bago mo kami Imbitahan at pangaralan 
sa loob ng kapatiran, alam ko na marami ang hindi pagkakaunawaan. Mga tribo, mga sekta, iba-ibang pinanggalingan. Ano pa, kapatid, ang nais mong pagtalunan? Ganap ang pananampalataya Hanggat di mo na isa iyong kapatid Ang nais mo sa iyong sarili Tunay na tagumpay Atin na ang simula Wala nang higit pa sa pag-aanyaya Patungo sa landas ng kanyang kinalugdan Sa gitna ng sambayanan, alam ko na marami Ang hindi pagkakaunawaan Mga debate mga siraan at mga pagtatanong Ano pa kabayan ang naisong pagtalunan Gabay hindi pa nauunawaan hanggat hindi mo na isa
Gabay ay ang siyang pinakadakilang handog mula sa tunay na lumikha para sa bayan at para sa mga mahal sa buhay manalangin ng sabay-sabay. Hari na ay magtagumpay, halina sa tulay ng tagumpay, halina sa tulay ng tagumpay. Tunay na tagumpay At di, At di nang simula Tayo, tayo ay magtulungan Iisang tunay Tunay Masakit, masabihan Maglinis ka muna Bago mo kami imbitahan at pangaralan Sa loob ng kapatiran Alam ko na marami Ang hindi pag Pagkakaunawaan Mga tribo Mga sekta Iba-ibang pinanggalingan Ano pa kapatid Ang nais mong pa Di ganap ang pananampalataya Hanggat di mo nais sa iyong kapatid Ang nais mo sa iyong sarili Tunay na tagumpay At di nang simula Tayo ay magtulungan Iisang tulang Wala nang higit pa sa pag-aanyaya Patungo sa landas ng kanyang kinalugdan Sa gitna ng sambayanan, alam ko na marami Ang hindi pagkakaunawaan Mga debate mga siraan at mga pagtatanong ano pa kabayan 
pagkakataon ang ngayon na tayo ay nagtitipon-tipon mga kababayan para sa kapatiran tayo 